Yeah, so hello, welcome everyone. Um, so this session is about uh, a generic multi-proc API and the first user for it, uh, which is TC BPF, so I call it TCX, um, where we want to implement links for it. So this was like a longer term goal. And then as a second part uh, of this session would be um, an update on the on the meta device thing, um, or like for those who haven't heard about it, what it is and why we want to add it to the kernel. Um, so let's start first with the generic multi-attach API. So the goal would be to uh, have a generic reusable multi-program management API so that th this would be uh, fitting for longer term, <coughs> given we see more and more projects using uh, BPF in the wild and therefore like a single attachment hook in some of the cases is not really adequate anymore. So we want to basically have a way to attach multiple programs and to, and to have the same look and feel for different uh, consumers of this API and to be able to express dependencies between programs. So back at the Linux Plumbers conference last year, uh, I gave a talk about Cilium's BPF kernel data path, ref and there's also corresponding patch set on the mailing list if you want to take a look later on. So basically the TLDR in the patch set was that we reworked the TC BPF layer. Uh, we added um, a new fast path and also the management API for it to make it FD based so it wouldn't use Netlink and QDisks and all of that. And with that, it would also be the opportunity to add uh, BPF links for this because this has been missing for a long time. And we want to add it because from the Cilium perspective, we've seen that uh, some of our users run into cases where Cilium's BPF programs got ripped out underneath by by others by accident. Um, so yeah, and with this rework, um, I basically also um, added a, the attach detach query link creation API for, for TC um, so that you can basically use the proc and link uh, file descriptor together with the priority. Priority was used back then because it was the same uh, as with TC, but then the feedback, rightfully so, <laughs> uh, was can we challenge the status quo, as Alexei mentioned yesterday, and uh, can, we can, can we come up with something better because priorities are hard to use. Users don't really know what to pick, and so they might all pick the same, um, which is what happened in our case. Um, yeah, the other feedback was also to, um, just as a side note, that's why I mentioned the TCX here to basically name this layer slightly different. Um, so it's called TCX, basically. So in terms of alternative directions to express dependencies, uh, one of the areas we looked into was systemd because they have um, this already for unit files where you have before, after uh, dependencies that you can express and based on the unit file name to um, have like this, or this different ordering. So it would be nice uh, for the BPF side to to have an idea, this was basically one of the feedback from the discussions on that patch set. And especially um, also from talking to different people, for example, uh, like um, Andre from, from, from Meta, um, there are multiple cases where you have management demons for BPF. So it would be super useful to, um, to have them uh, being, so to, to be able to express the, the before, after dependency uh, for for this case, so like the initial um, design with that um, that we converged on uh, from the discussion was basically to have something like this, um, so that you we we add a couple of flags um, before after, and you should be able to specify like an FD or an ID. Usually, when uh, demons uh, want to query, you you get all the IDs back, so it would also be useful. Uh, to have like a ID that you can uh, point to the kernel when you load program that you want to have this next to um, that given ID. And this should be useful, this should be working for programs and links. And in order to toggle between those two, there's like an additional BPF ID flag. And in order to toggle between program and links, we have a BPF link flag. And 
Then in, on, on top of this, also a first and last, so that you can basically specify, I have my um, DDoS mitigation, this should be guaranteed to be the first in the whole processing chain, or I have my um, monitoring to see like what kind of traffic, for example, is being pushed into the node, so this needs to go last. Um, and then you should be able to combine all of them as well. On top of this, um, so yeah, so, so the implementation would be for the proc-based attach and detach API as well for the links. And from the query, we, um, we should be able to have a revision counter uh, that we can also pass in when we attach something. Um, yeah, there's a question. So that you can basically assert that when you attach it, that this internal state must be that specific revision. Um, yeah. Just a question on the first and last. Um, yeah. Is this a, a requirement, meaning the second one that tries to say it's first is guaranteed to fail because they can't both be first? Yeah, exactly. And so it's a first come, first serve type of way. Yeah. And you can even come, and, and then what I will show later in the examples, you can also combine those. You can say it needs to be first, but it also needs to come before that specific program that is in the, so it, like all those flags are combinable. And when you say first, last, well, then there's a, if, if you do that, then it would be like the only single one, yeah. And so before doesn't mean immediately before, you just mean anywhere before, is that what you mean? Or it is it immediately, be immediately before that specific program? Okay. And so as you said, uh, you, have, you just answered my other question. If you say first and last, that means I, th I must be the only one, nobody exactly. else. Exactly, okay. yeah. Right. Or, or, or fail if you can't meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. And the idea would be like to have this whole thing as an um, layer like or as an API that all the other consumers, for example, the TCBPF, but also future XDP, various others, the C groups, that they can just use it and it would be the same for all of them. Yeah, so basically it would look like this. And just to walk through some examples, uh, like that would be the simple, so here uh, is the implementation for libppf when you have the, the link creation API, so I'm just showing this here. So basically you have as an argument uh, the specific program, so there are two new sections for tcbpf, the TCX ingress and TCX egress. Uh, you pass in an if index where you want this to attach, and then you have a flag and a relative object um, argument. And if both of them are zero, it would just be like an append case. You would just append the program next to, um, like into the list of programs. Um, if you would say BPF before and BPF ID, uh, ID and you would specify a program number two ID that exists in that area, uh, it will basically make sure that it attaches right before that. Uh, if that doesn't exist, it will bail out with an error. So that's basically where you can assert that the, um, like th that is the requirement, that is my in, in intent that I, where I want to add this. Or for example, you combine them, BPF first, BPF before, and this time a program FD, and Similar, so it now it will make sure that the program that you attach to, like this from, from the skeleton, um, it will always be the first. Um, so you said if it doesn't already exist, then you'd fail. So my question is, is yeah. there a race condition? What happens if the thing detaches at the same time as you're, de as you're attaching? Is it non-deterministic then, depending on which one you process first? So, so that is basically locked with the RTNL, so that uh, there, there's no such race condition. I didn't understand that. Maybe we can tuck it off of line, but I didn't understand that. Yeah. No, what? Um, let's say A says I must go immediately before B. Mm -hmm. That completes. B then says I'd like to detach B. What happens to A? So, like the the first request, I mean, I mean that that is basically serialized, right? So the first I understand it's serialized, but when yeah. B detaches, does that put A into an invalid state because no. A has to come immediately before B? No. I mean that that is not 
I mean, that is just okay. for the point where you attach. Okay, I'm going to pass it to Andre. At the, at the time where you um, okay. but, attach it. But if you're saying A must come before B, and if you're not going to start up A unless B already exists, <laughs> right? Right. Then yeah. you can still get into that state if you don't. Uh, well, here, so that's, that's my question. Yeah, so it seems like you're treating B P before as a kind of a permanent condition. It's not. Yeah. It's just like for the that particular attachment. It's yeah. like immediately before that as of now. And if like <coughs> something changes after that, that's fine. That that's sort of the idea. Because like otherwise it's very expensive to like keep maintaining this invariant, right? Yeah. It sounds like the model okay. I understand that answer. Uh, it sounds like the model then is to say um, if it fails, it's because something must have just changed, and I kind of repeat attaching in a loop or something because I have to then reread what's the state and then see what I'm going to go before now, right? That's your intended model, right? Is that if there's a failure, it means that uh, there's something that hasn't hit steady state yet and just keep retrying, or you could, right? You're not forced to, but you could keep retrying to say, mm -hmm. ah, well, then I want to be after, right before the next one that would have been after that, that kind of thing. Even better, you, you can actually specify expected revision of like the attachment and like if anything changes even something that you don't care about like you can still like get a failure in retry so that's the expected uh, whatever expected mm -hmm. version or something yeah yeah all right another example like you would go first before and then you specify a link in that um so given like in the s in the sense of time so like yeah it, I, I think it's quite flexible in terms of what you can express here then we have the first and last, um, in which case it will be the only one in in this case. Um, and yeah. Then with the revision, uh, I added like a second API to libbpf, but we can discuss it whether that makes sense or not from your point of view. I mean, I, I wanted to keep the other one simple in case people really don't need the revision thing. Um, I mean, <laughs> if you follow the the API design of libpf, uh, I would keep the program and if I have index as like arguments and then everything else as the opts struct. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. And then you just have like one API, which is like optional stuff can sure. go into a struct. Yeah. So if I understood that right, an advantage of the uh, revision stuff is if you're in a particular state and then uh, two apps are trying to do an attach at the same time and they both say before the same one, right, then there's a race conditions which one goes first where revision would prevent that too. Right, so maybe revision is actually the more recommended one. I don't know. I mean, if you care about the strict ordering, right? Yeah. Okay, um, so that is basically the way you can program it. Uh, in terms of the UAPI extensions, so for the query uh, UAPI, um, well, for, for networking, I added the target if index. Um, then, uh, like there are, there are two like two arrays that we add uh, that we ex extend this. One one is like a link IDs and then the link attached flag. So basically, uh, when you would dump um, the internal state. Uh, you get a number of proc IDs, they are always filled um, when something is attached. And then you get link IDs in addition, which have the IDs of the links, obviously, as the name says. And they are being filled and otherwise zero if there's no link uh, there. And then you have uh, proc attached flags and link attached flags. So that is quite flexible if you have proc specific flags only in the future. Um, in this case here, like the first and last, like those two flags, they need to be uh, permanent. Um, but yeah, so that is how, how that looks in terms of the flag extension. What I mentioned earlier, I think uh, I can quickly uh, skim over that. Attach, detach, UAPI, so that's quite similar. We, we add the if index for networking as well. Um, and then just the union for the relative FD and ID, and then the expected revision. So it's not that big of a change to the existing um, uh, BPF editor. The link creation. Uh, so here, a lot of the parameters are already like from the generic common fields that we can reuse. Um, and the only thing is given, uh, yeah, here we need to add this to a to a, like a, a link specific section, and in, in, in this case, like the TCX, because we cannot attach new fields at the end of it. But yeah, that's just um, what we have today. So we have to extend it in this case here. Uh, for the internals, um, 
So basically, you have this BPFM proc um, concept. So it's basically like an array of items that you want to iterate to. Um, I made this an array instead of list so that it's more cache, um, so that you have better cache locality. And the internal state, what we store here is basically the proc pointer flags for flags that need to be persistent and then ID in case of the link ID. And you always have a pair, an A, a and B pair, that then when you do updates to the internal state, uh, you, would, you would populate the opposite uh, pair uh, for, the, for, the, for this array and then swap it out uh, so that you don't need to allocate memory on detach so that this doesn't fail. Um, so that's the implementation here. <coughs> and so yeah, like uh, that, that is basically being added for TC Express as a first user. And um, the way we run or like the, the, the way we, we execute this in the fast path is basically to just walk to the array. Um, whenever it says next as a verdict, then we go to the next program. And then at the end, there's always like a null entry so that we exit out of there. And if you look into the scat handle ingress or scat handle egress, so that is basically um, something that uh, I reflected a bit. So you have the static key where you run the TCX programs first, what you can see here. And then if we have a verdict uh, where we don't stop the, uh, where we stop the pipeline, we uh, can directly go to the individual actions. Or if there's a way where you need to be able to collocate both, like the, the new style TCX versus the old style TC programs, you can say from your TCX program to do the TCX next. So then it will jump into the whole QDisk, CLS, CLS act, uh, QDisk. Um, um, Daniel, uh, Tok has a question online. Okay. Tok, go for it. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Cool. Um, so I, I bought the multiproc uh, API. So first and last flags are permanent, right? Yeah. Um, why is that useful and what happens? How do we resolve conflicts if two programs set them? I think, what, well, why is it useful? I mean, you, you kind of want to ensure that in some of the cases, uh, like the DDoS prevention that you don't accidentally put the, uh, I don't know, monitoring in front of it so that you would DDoS yourself or, I mean, that's like probably some of the reasons I could think of. Mm. It just seems like someone will just grab it and lock everyone else out and then you will have the same problem again, just in reverse. Yeah. Um, we are thinking, I mean, this could be extended further. Like if you, for example, have just some monitoring uh, use cases where you don't actually change the state of the SKB or whatever, and you just want to do to have the in inspection, maybe we could add a another flag where you have like a read only, and then you would also be able to attach uh, into this first and last, mm -hmm. as long as you don't change the internal state. It could probably be, uh, something we could think of. Um, hmm. An another option that we also considered for libxdp but haven't implemented yet is some some kind of admin override um, where you have an mm -hmm. API to clear the flag if something is misbehaving or override what the program says for these um, persistent flags. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't cover it here, but like for the for the replace case, uh, that should be an option. I mean, okay, right. And this, the second question was, um, you, with this, as far as I can tell, it's not possible to atomically replace multiple programs at once. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, well, you ha you have to. Re re well, yeah, you cannot. Like the 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 only other thing is if you would expose the whole area, but uh, like when we discussed this, uh, like. Yeah, I, I think it makes things more complicated and and, yeah. and error prone as well, in my opinion. 
um, kind of picking up on that first last question that Toke asked, it's interesting mm -hmm. because it ties into what uh, Dave was asking with like, what does after or before mean? Like first and last are very different than after and before. Yeah. And if we remove that, if we said first and last are also just a concept that applies at attached time, not always, then that would make the API mu more much more consistent, right? And you're always going to have a conflict in this thing of saying, oh, <coughs> we need the API to mediate what's going to be the first program or the last program, I think is basically the wrong approach. Like, you need to do this in your user space management layer where you're saying, well, the DDoS thing is the most important, and so I should start that first, and then the other things come up, or however you do it. So I think I kind of agree with Toke in saying that the first and last is maybe a bit special. So is it, uh, okay, so two things here, right? Like first and last, yes, they are special, but like they are important, right? Because like, for example, when you think about LSMs, right? Whoever runs first can like reject everything, right? And like if correctness of like the overall system depends on like your VPF program to be run first, that's a hard requirement. And if it doesn't, that's not satisfied, then like you cannot start and function correctly, right? So mm -hmm. in that sense, first, last is actually, yes, different <coughs> than before and after. But uh, I'm wondering if people are actually confusing the uh, first and last as like a prepend versus a pend. Uh, you know, a prepend, a pend versus like really first and, and second. Because like for, if you want to add something as of right now to be the first one, but like you don't care if someone like attaches after that before you, then you just mm -hmm. specify before and like object zero or something like this, yeah. right? Yeah. And that means prepend. Similar like for a pand, you say like after zero. Zero means like no FD, right? But that seems that that means just like after or before before anything, right? Uh, so in that sense, yes, first and last I think are important for correctness, and they have to be persistent because like if you don't persist them, right, and like don't enforce them, then like what does it even mean? It, it's basically prepend a pand only, right? Which you can express with before after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was why I asked why it's useful. So I think this also comes back to the discussion we've had before with like <laughs> the difference between a system where you're controlling all the programs and you can have this kind of policy and the and the and a system where you are loading third party applications that just pick flags for themselves and some random developer has said, I want to be first, and then they lock out everyone else. Um so like and, and that's gonna happen, so there has to be some kind of override, uh, I think. If they're useful for a use case, like I'm, I'm okay with keeping them as long as you can sort of admin overwrite them in some way. We also talked about having a, a, a hook that a policy daemon can hook into and, and reorder programs, but I guess that can be added later as, as a way of, of doing this. Um, so I think I am somewhat partial to Toki's argument because we've seen you know conflicts in before and conflicts in after and other things, not just BPF programs, right? You know, firewalls or things that oh, I need to be first and in, in something unrelated to BPF bef that predates BPF. Certainly on the Windows side, and I think on the Linux side too. Um, and so it gets to uh, you're going to have collisions. What are you going to do? And the answer right now you're giving is uh, first come, first serve, and everybody else wins. Everybody else loses, right? Um, separately, I think there's an interesting thing to, to Lawrence's part that says, uh, and uh, Andre, you mentioned, um, will people do the uh, accidentally use first when they just mean I want to be the first one on the list right now? Okay, maybe there's a case for having a flag that's currently first separate from a flag that's always first, right? Because right now, uh, it is before with zero. Okay, it's before with zero, where the zero is the magic no more that just means I'm first in the list. Okay, mm -hmm. that wasn't on the slide, thank you. Yep. That was my question. Okay, so for, for the, like, I mean, we are talking about, like, end goal is, like, some production system where, like, you know, maybe multiple systems try to coexist, right? So, like, yes, definitely there should be some sort of agreement, like, gentleman's agreement that, like, if you don't really need to be first, like, you shouldn't specify the first, right? And, like, if you do because you don't know, that's a bug, you will report and someone will fix it. Uh, but we have, like, for the force detachment, that has to be kind of a human or, like, capsis admin-like uh, enforcement and, like, detachment mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And, like, we have link, uh, link detach, right? Like, where you... It's slightly different because link detach leaves the link in place, but it detaches the underlying program. So maybe we can reuse that or like have similar approach here. But like you can forcefully detach even if it like says like first or last, right? So, but it, but it's more about like forceful detachment than like the ordering. You should be able to force detach any mm -hmm. detached thing if you are admin, right? I think it's just orthogonal. Okay. Okay, then a final point. Maybe maybe the first last is a bit like as we said 
like people interpret it differently. Maybe it needs to be like always first and always last. Force first. For I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, Andrew said that. I don't know. Naming Forever. is the hardest. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, always <laughs> first, currently before is what Dave Fala says. And it's really hard to misinterpret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Add a bunch um, of uh, syllables. I have to move on a bit to not overshoot too much in terms of time. Sorry, um, I have some additional questions. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, like for this API, you said you take both IDs and file yeah. descriptors and you take both yeah. like programs and links. Uh, Let's start at the IDs. Why why does it take IDs instead of file descriptors? Because all the other APIs we have, as far as I know, take yeah. file descriptors, right? So when we discussed this a bit, I mean, like the the rationale was like, well, um, like that management daemon that would um, consume this API, it would query, and all the time when you query, you get back l um, IDs, right? So then you have this additional hurdle that you need to get the file descriptor from the ID, and then so you could just is as well. Is that a hurdle? I don't know. I, is that really a hurdle? But I mean, that daemon that you want is, is not, not going to be kept. So Andre says getting the FD from the ID is cap sysadmin. So you need cap sysadmin to be able yep. to specify the other thing. Isn't that what you will want? Well, the idea is that like it's not always like one centralized daemon, right? Like it could be multiple independent applications. They just have like they know about each other potentially, right? And like we just just don't have defined order like in which they start up, right? But like when they start up, they can actually go and somehow discover that like okay, some other program is already running and I want to run after it, right? And then they will just like query ID, maybe like ID is stored somewhere on the file, right? So like they don't need capsys admin if they can specify this ID. They can get this ID through some other means, right? Okay, then the follow up is like do we need to add IDs to all new APIs or is this I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it kind of begs the question, right? It's like, uh, like if we if we do this for all APIs. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. in the future, like do we not, like? Well, I mean, like the idea was like for this API to be able to support this in different attachment points. So, yeah. um, in that sense, yes. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, so the meta device uh, for BPF, um, the idea is basically overall for the Cilium use case that we have, we really want to have the same performance for applications inside Kubernetes pods, aka network namespaces, compared to applications residing in the host. A and you know, just, be just because you move them to network namespace shouldn't incur a performance penalty. Uh, it currently does. Um, so we did some performance measurements the first case, what you can see here, like in the uh, uh, turkeys, is basically the, the weave and the upper stack forwarding. Um, the next case is some of the improvements we did in the past with the, so we call it BPF host routing, but it really means like to use the BPF redirect peer and BPF redirect uh, neighbor for traffic going in and out. And the last one, this comparison is basically the baseline, the, the host performance. Why does this suck? Uh, in terms of the, um, yeah, like when, when you go up to the stack, the, the socket is basically, the SKB is orphaned from the socket, and that basically breaks TCP back pressure. Um, and there, was, there were multiple attempts in the mailing list to remove it, but it all boils down that it seems to break NetFilter's T proxy, so it needs to stay there. <laughs> um, but that is the, um, yeah, I, I think that is the main cause why uh, the performance drops so much. Uh, like in this case, um, basically the socket is retained all the way to the physical device and it stays there in the queue disk if it has to and then really only TCP inside the pod gets the notification. And yeah, so the question is, can we get to this point? And so, yeah, so we added a uh, new device driver as a weave replacement. We call it Meta, but I'm still open for other names if you want, uh, like if you have good suggestions, good short suggestions, naming is always the hardest, but I thought, because it can mean a lot of things, depending on what um, the BPF uh, business logic in that, uh, in that driver uh, would do. So basically the core idea is like for uh, traffic going out of the pod to Shift the like to to move the BPF TC programs that are currently attached to the on the TC ingress on the weave side into the driver itself, so that basically that BPF is executed at the XMIT um, 
routine in the device. And then what we can do there, uh, we switch the network namespace immediately, then we can do the FIP lookup, and when we see that it's going to the physical device, we can directly redirect it from there without going to a per CPU backlog queue. So that is basically the core idea uh, behind that. Question is, yeah, what about XTP support? Because we has XTP, do we also need to add it here now? And I'm saying I really don't want this because, um, I mean, XTP, if you look today into the weave code, it takes up three quarters of the weave code. <laughs> so it's really super complex. If you want to use XTP, just use weave. Uh, but really the idea is like for the Kubernetes use case, I mean, like, well, XTP on the physical device, that definitely makes sense. And after that, you get all the GRO batching for SKP, and that is uh, absolutely fine. And in terms of program management, we would reuse the same API that I talked about earlier. Um, it's still like a main and a peer device, so you have two devices. And the idea would be only the, the main device uh, that you set as main device, it would reside in the host namespace, and only that can control the program management for both uh, devices. So you can only update the peer device BPF program from the main device so that no other entity inside the pod can somehow detach it. Um, and the whole device would be an L3 device so that you have it as a NOARP device. L2 mode could be configurable, um, but it wouldn't be the default. But it would still be useful I mean, when we talk to some of our folks uh, that do BGP with Cilium, I think it's still useful for testing. Um, the other feature for that uh, device driver would be that if no BPF is attached, you, you black hole all traffic so that nothing gets leaked in between, like switching network namespaces. Uh, but that again is also configurable. Um, and the idea would be to have compatibility for TC BPF so that you can then move the programs from TC, ingress, weave into this device type. And if you look here into the, in, into the XMIT, so basically here we switch the network namespace and we execute the BPF program and if the BPF program says redirect, we redirect directly to the physical device without going to a per CPU backlog queue. And if you look into flame graphs, so what you can see here on the right side, how it looks, it, it's all done in the process context, so there's no rescheduling point uh, as in the case for Weave when you really have like worst case scenario. And looking into performance, this is basically where we get to. So we get really on par uh, with the host. Same as, like that's for the TCP stream case, 400 gigabit. Um, same as the TCP OR, uh, where we get the lower latency. So it's really on par. So yeah, in case of Cilium, that's basically one of the last missing building block that we, where we want to get to. So we basically, um, here we have the bandwidth manager with FQ, EDT, where we would then also be able to support VBR from the, from the pods. Uh, we, we do have this BPF host routing where we, like for inbound traffic, do this uh, redirect peer, for outbound traffic, to redirect neighbor. Then we have the reef device replacement so that we really get to the same performance as I showed earlier in the graphs and then the other thing is like big TCP uh, that we enabled, but even with big TCP we get lower latency, so that's what we measured here as well. So yeah, that is the um, proposal. And one small open question uh, I wanted to discuss um, is that given that's coming as a module, um, sh like <laughs> I think that there are two options. I think like the as far as I've seen, the NetFilter BPF basically has this Boolean to configure it. When the system call is enabled, we are able to create links for it. Or whether we should have some kind of registration API for this device so that then we can have all the logic around um, like this BPF mproc uh, handling inside the device driver. And then when it loads, it just registers to it and then it will do this NDO uh, call to a delegate. Um, but yeah, I can, I'm leaning towards the latter and I'm, I would try out that um, for implementing it as a next step. But um, uh, as far as I recall, uh, network namespaces is not a config option. And VEs is. So 
built in the kernel <laughs> with NetNS. Well, built in config the kernel with Net <laughs> includes NetNS, but then Vs without Vs, this is completely useless configuration. Yeah, that's true. So okay. I wasn't you're aware of sort of <laughs> trying to do the same thing, just yeah. make it depend on Net and be a part like don't make it yeah. a driver. Like why does it have to be a driver? Like Vs didn't have to be a driver. All right, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. It's like crucial part part of like yeah. NetNS. NetNS is not same thing here. It's yeah. like it's core. It's not a driver. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, last slide. So basically, the um, generic multi-attach API. So that is uh, pretty much all of it is implemented and uh, working. So I'm still adding a bunch more test cases and make it nice, ready for upstream submission. Um, and then once that lands, that's also the prerequisite for the meta device. So that's like the next step after that. Um, yeah, and then I'm thinking to look into adding this multi-attach support for XTP as well, so that we have this for both TC and XTP. Uh, yeah. yeah you we want this for C group probably as well, yeah. and like maybe for like LSMs. I don't know, like. Pretty much for everything, like even where we have multi-attach right now, like we need more control over like the order. One, one more point about like the what if someone attached was, f sorry, going back to the first part. Uh, the first and last, right? Maybe we should add another flag like force. And then if you have capsus admin, then like you can go and basically detach the, the existing mm -hmm. first or last or something like that. And okay. another question I have, like when you go to the very beginning, right, like with mproc, right, like you're using this mproc at runtime to like iterate over programs. If you want to optimize for f optimize for cache, right, like why would you collocate the program pointer with the flags? Like you don't need flags at runtime. Yeah, I would split them. Just actually. for management, yeah. And also, uh, I don't know if that's good that like we just allocate the maximum length of the array. Like w we potentially will be wasting a lot of memory there. Yeah, on you probably wanted to sim simplify, like you know, like not fail on real lock and stuff like this. But maybe there is some middle ground. Yeah, I think that could still be. I mean, yeah, I think we can still. Well, take yeah, care we of can. This. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like UAPI where it's baked in forever. I I agree. Cool. Um, I have a question on the um, meta device. So you mentioned if for to the if then it will. You will directly do redirect right, without going to the backlog queue. Yeah. So about how about for the packet going up to the hooks? So that, that is already oh, the packet going up to the host. Yeah, mm. that would go to the backlog queue, and that that would take like the same path as the weave would. Yeah. Cool. So I don't want to overshoot too much. So thank you very much.